新闻节目当中，您将了解到以下。The Hong Kong People's Liberation Army will carry out this sacred mission. These soldiers are in the international spotlight. This army is composed of the top units from the three branches of the military. On July 1, 1997, on behalf of the Chinese nation, they will cross the river at Shenzhen and put an end to the inglorious past 100 years and maintain the city's stability and prosperity. The present troops are descended from Dadu He Company, which scored a victory during the Long March. Seventeen soldiers forced their way across the river and occupied the small town beyond. In the past 60 years, this company has upheld the glorious tradition of the People's Liberation Army. They will proudly carry their battalion flag into Hong Kong for the people and the country. These troops' training schedule corresponds with the countdown to the return. Not a moment is wasted. Their character is reflected by their bearing and appearance. You can also see the Dadu He Company spirit in their actions and cooperation. Every morning, everything is damp. The veterans are somewhat carefree, but the new soldiers undergoing the arduous training cannot escape the feeling of dampness until the lights go out. The feeling comes from both the weather and from sweating. The soldiers come from all four corners of the country for a common purpose. I'm from Guangxi. I'm from Hebei. I'm from Hebei. Hebei. Jiangsu. Tianjin. Guangdong. I'm from Shanxi. The first thing they must learn is the glorious tradition of the company. In 1935, the main force of the Red Army stopped at Dadu He. Seventeen soldiers were chosen to form a commando squad. They succeeded in opening the path to victory. The heroic spirit of Company B has produced many heroes. These troops consider building a strong civilized... Reading in the library has become an important part of the soldiers' lives. Reading also embodies their sense of mission because most of the books are related to Hong Kong law and regulations. Some books are so popular that they must be reserved. The more books you read, the more mature you become. We purposely ask the soldiers questions concerning the Hong Kong basic law. What is the underlying policy of the basic law? One country, two systems. In section two of the basic law, which clause applies most to you? In section two, clause 14, it says all the soldiers stationed in Hong Kong must obey both the national laws and the SAR law. These principles determine their conduct to have discipline, to obey the law, and to be a civilized soldier. In addition, the troops also have their own guidelines called Moral Regulations for Hong Kong Soldiers. These regulations are the same as the traditional PLA three disciplines and eight points. These are the specific requirements for our soldiers based on our specific mission and the specific conditions in Hong Kong. To ensure strict discipline and good morals, we lay down these guidelines as standards for the soldiers to follow. Soldiers and officers in Company B cultivate their moral spirit in everyday life a little at a time. What are you making? It's a mop. Why don't you buy one? You can save money this way. How much is a chopping board? More than 20 yuan. 
The soldiers repair their chopping board. They make mops, sandbags, and vests themselves. Today in the 90s, the company still maintains a tradition of hard work and plain living. Before meals, the soldiers sing together, which shows their spirit of unity. The soldiers and officers eat in the same dining room, but the officers pay for their meals. This is another tradition in which the officers take no undue privilege. The officers pay 1.6 yuan or more per meal and for their family members. On holidays, meals are more expensive. You can tell the quality of a company by the unity of the captain, instructor and the officers. They need to work together in order to lead the men. If the officers are strict with themselves and take the lead in everything, the soldiers will willingly maintain discipline and obey orders. Many countries restrict their soldiers to base. Our leadership requires us to follow this practice. Ordinarily, soldiers are not allowed to leave base without permission. On holidays, a limited number will be granted leave. The discipline is strict, almost mechanical. The requirements are also strict. You might even say finicky. Whether on base or off, our officers and soldiers feel that the honor of the military is the most important thing. We have strict discipline for our troops. At the same time, the management is based on the three major rules. Our policy of restriction to base is strict, and in Hong Kong, it must be even stricter. Strict training makes good soldiers. Soldiers say discipline plus consciousness makes good soldiers. After Company B was selected for service in Hong Kong, they completed three years of training in a little over one. In more than 20 subjects, they had excellent marks. Among the Hong Kong troops, Company B has the most top soldiers. One out of every five men has been recognized for his merits. This company has won the title of Model Training Company. They all clearly know that the Hong Kong troops are a window of the PLA. Company B has been selected to perform military exercises for the public. They are proud of this honor. In these performances, they coordinate with other companies. Company B proud of this honor, but all the Hong Kong troops are, for they remember their purpose, serve the people, heart and soul. This wall traces the 60-year history of the company. The soldiers consider it very important. Our officers and the soldiers have a strong sense of political responsibility and strong political beliefs. We are acutely aware of the heavy task of assuming responsibility for Hong Kong. For us, it's President Jiang Zemin, Commander-in-Chief of the Chinese People's Armed Forces, has a special regard for these troops, which will soon carry out the sacred mission in Hong Kong. He visited them and entrusted them with the people's hopes.
I believe you soldiers. The soldiers of the Daduha Company and their comrades in arms will certainly shoulder the double responsibility of history and the present. We are confident that our strong civil